Hyperthyroidism is a metabolic disease that occurs in the thyroid gland. It is more commonly associated with females. Before discussing the actual disease, I'm going to discuss the normal anatomy and physiology of the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland, colored in red here, consists of two lateral lobes connected by an isthmus, which are located anterior and below the trachea and thyroid cartilage. The thyroid gland is made up of follicles and parafollicular cells. These follicles are lined by cuboidal to columnar cells filled with thyroglobulin. These cells are responsible for the production of thyroid hormone, which are of two types. The first one is thyroxine T4 and the second one is triiodothyronine T3. Normally T4 which is 93% of thyroid hormones, is found in the blood bound to proteins such as globulin and albumin, while T3, only 7%, is free in the blood. However, once these hormones reach the tissues, all T4 are converted to T3, which is the active type, by selenium containing the iodinases. Now, how are these hormones released by the thyroid gland? To start off, the hypothalamus in the brain release hormones called thyrotropin releasing hormones, TRH. These hormones travel by means of the hypophysal portal system into the anterior pituitary where they cause the release of thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH. TSH travels in the blood and reaches the thyroid gland by the superior and inferior thyroid arteries. TSH binds to a G-protein coupled receptor which in turn increases the cyclic AMP levels, which increases thyroid hormone synthesis. T4 and T3 are released into the body circulation and bind to thyroid hormone receptors, which is a nuclear receptor that result in the formation of a hormone response element. This hormone response element alters transcription. Thyroid hormone functions in, met- in metabolism where they cause upregulation of carbohydrates as well as lipid metabolism and protein synthesis. So the overall product is an increase in basal metabolic rate known as BMR. Now what happens if this mechanism has a malfun- malfunction? You either develop hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism. Hyperthyroidism is a hypermetabolic state caused by the increase in levels of T3 and T4 thyroid hormones. Hyperthyroidism is divided into primary and secondary. Primary hyperthyroidism is due to a defect in the thyroid gland itself, causing an increase in thyroid hormones. Example of primary hyperthyroidism is Graves' disease hyperfunctioning multinodular goiter and hyperfunctioning adenoma, which is a benign neoplasm, while secondary hyperthyroidism is due to an increase in thyroid-stimulating hormone levels, which in turn increases thyroid hormone synthesis. So this is due to a defect in the anterior pituitary caused by a TSH-secreting pituitary adenoma. To start off, I will discuss Graves' disease, which is the most common cause of endogenous hyperthyroidism. Endogenous means that the body itself causes this type of hyperthyroidism, while exogenous means that uh, the patient takes supplements of uh, thyroid hormones. Graves' disease, its peak incidence is between the ages of 20 and 40, in which females are affected seven times more than men. 2% of the United States females have Graves' disease. It also has a strong genetic susceptibility between family members and 60% concordance rate between twins. Genetically, it is associated with HLA-DR3 and HLA-B8, which are markers that your body uses to identify itself. It is also associated with CTLA4 that encodes for inhibitory T-cell receptor. So a mutation in these genes leads to overactivation of T-cells. Graves' disease is an autoimmune disease with antibodies to TSH receptors in the thyroid gland. These include thyroid-stimulating immunoglobulin, which is an IgG antibody that binds to TSH receptor and mimics normal TSH, causing activation of adenylate cyclase and production of cyclic AMP, leading to an increase in thyroid hormones. Also, thyroid growth-stimulating immunoglobulin 
causes proliferation of thyroid follicular epithelium, resulting in hypertrophy and hyperplasia leading to a scalloped edge shape. The third antibody is TSH binding inhibitor immunoglobulin, which works via two mechanisms, either mimicking TSH and increased thyroid hormones or inhibiting TSH receptors. Now, a patient with Graves' disease will develop a triad of manifestations, which are, first of all, thyrotoxicosis, which is an increase in thyroid hormones, and this is due to a diffusely enlarged thyroid gland. Second of all, these patients also present with bilateral infiltrative ophthalmopathy with exophthalmus, also known as proptosis. This is due to an increase in the retroorbital connective tissue and extraocular muscles. This is due to a result of infiltration of the retroorbital space by T cells, as well as inflammatory edema and swelling of extraocular muscles. In addition to accumulation of hydrophilic glycos aminoglycans and increased number of adipocytes known as fatty infiltration, these changes cause the protrusion of the eye. Third of all, these patients present with a localized infiltrative dermopathy known as pretibial myxedema below the knee joint which present as bruising. Another cause of primary hyperthyroidism is hyperfunctioning toxic multinodular goiter which occurs in endemic areas with iodine deficiency commonly in mountains like Himalayas. This deficiency of iodine causes a decrease in thyroid hormones which is hypothyroidism However, there will be stimulation of thyroid stimulating hormone TSH from the pituitary gland that causes an increase in hormone production to reach normal levels. Long-standing goiter will result in hyperthyroidism with a diffusely enlarged thyroid gland. As for the complications of hyperthyroidism, there are many and include first of all, constitutional symptoms in which the patient's skin is soft and warm as well as heat intolerance in addition to sweating. The patient also presents with loss despite an increase in appetite. Second of all, stimulation of the gut results in hypermotility with diarrhea and malabsorption. Third of all, the patient presents with tachycardia, which is an increase in heartbeats that may lead to congestive heart failure. Fourth of all, the patient presents with tremor, nervousness, and proximal muscle weakness. Fifth, they present with lid lag, which is failure to open the eyes quickly, in addition to a wide staring gaze and, as discussed before, proptosis in Graves' disease. And last, they present with thyroid storm, which might be fatal if untreated. Thyroid storm is an increase in blood pressure, heart rate, and body temperature. After discussing hyperthyroidism, how can you as a doctor diagnose a patient with hyperthyroidism? This diagnosis is a combination between the signs and symptoms aforementioned in addition to lab works and blood tests. First of all, there's, you can diagnose hyperthyroidism by measuring TSH levels. As discussed earlier, an increase in thyroid hormones will cause negative feedback, therefore suppressing THS levels secreted by the anterior pituitary. So the normal level of TSH is 0.4 to 4 milli international units per liter. Any value below that suggests, suggests that there is hyperthyroidism. The second test is measuring the amount of thyroid hormones. Normal thyroxine T4 should be 4.6 to 12 microgram per deciliter. And triiodothyronine T3 should be 80 to 180 nanogram per deciliter. Values more than that suggest hyperthyroidism. Since the thyroid gland is the only part of your body that uses iodine, you can use radioactive iodine, iodine known as I-131 and then viewed under the scan to look for an increase in iodine uptake that suggests hyperthyroidism. So we discussed all that you need to know about the diseases of hyperthyroidism, but how do we treat and prevent it? Hyperthyroidism is an increase in thyroid hormone levels due to overproduction and enlarged thyroid gland. So the treatment begins by using drugs that decrease the amount or uh, effect of the thyroid hormones. And then if it's not enough, a surgeon performs thyroidectomy, which is the surgical removal of the thyroid gland. 
The most common class of drugs is thioamides, also known as methamazole and propyl thiouracil, sold under the brand name of tapazole. It is usually given three times a day. This drug works by inhibiting the whole process of thyroid hormone synthesis, from iodine pumping to condensation to organification, which are the steps in thyroid hormone synthesis. This drug takes 10 to 15 weeks to decrease the thyroid hormone levels to normal because the thyroid gland usually stores enough hormones for 2 to 3 months. The side effect of this drug is nausea and vomiting as well as rash as and itchiness. You can also treat hyperthyroidism by giving the patient radioactive iodine. This radioactive iodine will actually destroy the thyroid gland resulting in less thyroid hormone synthesis. So this is all you need to know about hyper, hyperthyroidism, the normal anatomy and physiology, the pathology of hyperthyroidism, including Graves' disease as well as the treatment of it. Thank you for watching.